so I don't forget to start. Do you not have a microphone? No, I normally do. I don't know why it's not working. Maybe not. So, Monica, as you watch this replay, we're, we're just talking about following your journey on social media. Thanks for posting all your pictures. It's been fun watching that unfold. Hi, Ryan. Can you hear me, Ryan? Let's see. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? No. Do you have a headset, Nico? Sometimes plugging that in helps. No. I'm going to plug mine in just in case. Ryan, can you hear me? Okay. Ryan, can you hear me? I'm going to unmute just to see. Ryan, can you hear me? Hey, Gail, I can hear you. This is Ryan with Moats Real Estate. I'm just trying to get my video going here in a second. Let's see if we can get Nico going here. No. <laughs> it's crazy. Hi, Diane. I'm just testing. Hey, Ted. Dude, been a while. Good to see you. Ted, talk to me. I'm here. It's good to see you. All right. So it must be on my end. Hang on. I know what it is. <laughs> okay. It helps if I unmute my computer. Now you can, can you hear me? Hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Cool. <laughs> Man. It's like I've been looking down here and going, oh, that's because my computer was on mute. So just talking away. How's everybody today? Things are good. Good. Good, good. good. <clears throat> so um, following Monica's African safari, um, it's been amazing seeing the animals. I, I wanted I want to know what she was feeling when she encountered the elephants because she said it was really emotional for her so looking forward to her um, catching us all up when she gets back um, i'm gail zintek i'm a friend a, a co-coach in the national coaching league with monica um, i don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching or hybrid coaching i really focus more on um, send out cards and the use around that system as a user for the past 11 years in building our real estate business. So for those of you who don't know me, um, Nico Lopez is my son-in-law. I'm blessed to have him as a family member. Um, he married my daughter. He dated her when she was 15. I think they've been together. How long do you know? 23 years? 23 years this year. So you've been a part of our family forever. I don't even remember you not being a part of our family. <laughs> so... Um, and so my husband and I, I was a stay at home mom for the first 25 years of my married life and I got my real estate license in 2004 at the age of 44. My husband and I have built our real estate business together, opening up our own brokerage in 2012. We close about 50 homes a year on average by referral. And uh, I attribute a lot of that to the mindset and what I've learned from my mentor, Cody Bateman, who just came out with this book called The Power of the Human Connection, How Relationship Marketing is Transforming the Way People Succeed. So I'm going to give you all a, a link in the group so that you can actually um, pre-order this book and you can get the download. And by pre-ordering it, you also get... Um, the audio version for free um, that's coming up. So it's, it's an amazing book and it, and it takes you through a journey of relationship marketing. Um, you know, there's a difference and, and we're going to talk today about system and heart. And I, I put in the intro, um, 
chatting about the power of human connection and how Send Out Cards has been the system to help my heart deliver messages that has led to long-term top of mind awareness. So um, I, I don't know much. I know about Nico. I don't know much about you. Is there another Gail in the house? <laughs> I love it. There is. I know it doesn't happen often, does it? And you even spell it the same way. I, I was at a, a, our Lake Association picnic on Saturday, and, and I was with, there was three Gales. There was <laughs> Wiley, I-L, and G-A-L-E. So out of three people, none of us spelled our, our names the same. So nice to meet you, Gail. Thank you. Um, and I, I'm going to just share a couple stories on how it relates to, you know, what Steve and I have been able to, to do and, and top of my I, right, show of hands. How many of you are currently using send out cards in your business? Okay. Just a couple of you aren't, um, you should. <laughs> and, and the reason I say that is because send out cards is such a, a an amazing system for connecting with people in a human connection way. And I'm gonna just share a couple of stories. So let me get right into this book. So in the book, Cody breaks this down into like three different categories. Um, there's section one, what relationship marketing really is. Section two is how relationship marketing works within the traditional sales and marketing process and why the relationship you build with yourself is the most important. So um, how many of you love to engage in personal development that you like, how many of you are audible? Like you, do you read books? So do you all know Hank Avink? Okay, Hank is my personal one-on-one -on -one coach. And I remember him, like, when I first started coaching with him, he's like, How, so what books are you reading? I'm like, oh, Hank, I don't read. <laughs> I don't read books. I, I, I pick up a book and I fall asleep. And, and so then he said, well, get an Audible account. So in, in six, well, I guess it's been seven and a half months, I've read 18 books, well, through listening, right, through Audible. And some really incredible mindset books. So I haven't even been falling asleep reading Cody's book, but I'm super excited that there's an audible version coming out because I will appreciate that, you know, as I go through my day. But in here, I'm, I'm going to read this because, you know, Cody talks about his dogs. He's, he's a dog lover. How many of you have dogs? Okay. Um, Cody has labs. Um, Gus is a, a dog I've heard about for the last 11 years. D Gus passed away a couple years ago. But here's a story he tells about dogs. And I want you to listen to this. Um, in some of my live events, I tell a story about my dogs, Gus and Ruger. Both dogs love to fetch tennis balls, but they do it differently. Gus gets so excited to fetch the ball that he takes off running before I can release the ball. The ball will land in front of him, and he will chase it until he grabs it in his mouth. When Gus returns with the ball, he doesn't want to let it go. Ruger, on the other hand, keeps his eye on the ball. He waits until I throw the ball, and he gets underneath it, catches it in midair, and when he returns the ball, he immediately releases it. He is ready to go again. So here's the point. There are many metaphors in this story. The sales metaphor is that Gus sees the ball as a sale. Ruger sees the ball as a person. So relate this in your business. Do you see the ball as a sale? Are you looking at the sale? Are you looking at the people that are involved in the sale? Ruger sees the ball as a person. Gus is on the chase. He takes his focus off the person and chases the sale. When he catches it, he mauls it to death and doesn't want to let it go. In other words, he keeps selling. He is focused on what he can get from the catch. Do you get that? Like, you, like picture that. You throw the tennis ball, chases it. Like, people are, you know, the ball is the sale. And how many, how many salespeople do you know that chase the sale? And they're always, like, like, trying to get the sale, close the sale, close the sale, close the sale. Um... Okay, Ruger keeps his focus on the person. Remember, the ball's a person. He has fun. He creates a connection. He keeps eye contact. 
and nourishes the relationship. He simply waits for the sale to come to him. And when it gets there, he doesn't have to chase it. He just catches it. When he brings it, he releases it. In other words, he stops selling and begins nurturing the relationship again. He just wants to he just wants the ball back in the air so he can have fun with his new friends. He is focused on what he can give to the person. He doesn't see it as a sale at all. So I have a I have a story around that. And um this this is a this is a cool story. It's very recent. So uh, four years ago, 2014, my husband and I were referred to a couple, Rich and Sierra Kabat, and they purchased a home. And their home they purchased was, I think at that time, they purchased it for $109,000. The day after they closed, there was straight line winds. They never said it was a tornado. That not, you know, like, and there were trees in their neighborhood, like huge trees. And it knocked one of the trees down on their fence, on their air conditioner. So, you know, imagine after, after you close with a client and the storm comes and causes damage. You know, if that had done, been done the day before, we probably could have you know, made sure everything was taken care of insurance-wise. So that was 2014. I put them in my send-out card system and started to – to send them cards. They were our, in our top 100. And um, four years goes by. We, hold, we host client events, Pumpkin Fest, Flower Fest, um, holiday cards, thinking of you, springtime. You know, I, I, um, that's usually how I, I get our top 100 on some kind of a list so that they're receiving cards at least four to six times a year. Well, in January, I, I took, you know, I looked at our top 100 and I thought, okay, well, Rich and Sierra, they never come to our client events. They never respond. We're not friends on social media. And I took them out of our top 100. In May this year, Steve, my husband, Steve gets a call. Hi, this is Sierra Kabat. Do you remember us? <laughs> and and Steve, like, he's like, oh, sure, yeah. And then after he hangs up, he goes, Gail, who's Sierra? Do you remember? You know, because it had been four years, and even though we had communicated with them, they never communicated back. So I looked up at our send out cards account, and honestly, I, I sent them, and I guess I could share my screen, right? I should have been a little more prepared. I, I sent them 21 cards over the last four years. So... Even in their absence from us, they were connected and they remembered who we were. They knew how to find us because we had stayed in touch. And so let me, um, oops, I just, let me, I'm going to go to my uh, send out cards account and I'll show you. I'll share my screen in just a second. So as I continue this story, um, this year, so in, so it was in, let me share my screen. We, Steve showed them houses. They said, hey, we want, you know, we're ready to make a move and we want to um, go look. We have two houses we want to see. And he took them to see those two houses. And I think he might've added another to the list. As you know, it's a inventory lacking market, even here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. <coughs> Excuse me. But he took them to see houses and they, they made an offer. They didn't have to sell to buy. How many of you want clients that don't have to sell their house before, you know, when they can buy the next one? And so in the relationships, I'm just going to show you. So here's, here's Rich and Sierra. And if I, if I pull them up and I look at the card history, you can see that over the last four years, these are the, these are, this is how we've kept in touch with them, you know, just a fall car, just a note. Um, this was a fun car that sent them the Detroit Tigers schedule, pumpkin fest, November holiday card, checking in, Valentine's, happy friendship day, pumpkin fest, <laughs> you know, so all pumpkin, see, every year invited them to pumpkin fest, but they never came. But 
when it came time for them to make a move, they remembered us. And so Steve helped them. We just closed on the sale of the home. We sold them four years ago, just last week. So calculating out 30 bucks, maybe over the course of the last um, four years, keeping in touch to net $9,000 in commission. Do you think it was worth it? And that's how send out cards can help you make a human connection. Like if you, not everybody's like me. I'm, I'm shy. I don't like to call. I'm a warm prospector. I don't like cold calling. I, you know, I want people to be attracted to us, to come to us when they have a need. That's just um, who I am. And <clears throat> this story illustrates the power and why I will never take anybody out of my top 100 again, right? I'll just keep adding them. And as I send cards, pulling up a group of people to send a card to, um, our Pumpkin Fest is coming up again in October. We're moving it to um, my daughter's daycare center. So I just sent a save the date card because I want them. I can show you what that looks like too. In case um, you're not as some, most of you are, but so this is the card that went out a couple days ago. Save the date. And then it has a picture of the daycare on. Nico, I sent one of these to you and Andrea too. So <laughs> you can see what I'm sending out. Um, October 13th, 10 to noon, new location, the Looking at Glass Child Care Center. So this is a save the day that says invitation to follow. Um, this is the card I just sent yesterday. So this is Rich and Sierra. This is the front of the card. Here are the two homes. This is the home that we just closed on. This is their dream home that they purchased. And this is the message inside. And then, of course, on the back. And I even I even remember, put in here, thank you for your call in the spring. Do you remember us? What an honor to represent you in the sale of your home on Huron and the purchase of the home you dreamed of. And then custom branding on the back. And I said we will be no, donating two brand new bikes to Toys for Tots um, on your in your honor. So let's talk about branding. How do you brand yourself? You know, for us, it's we brand ourselves with giving bikes. We, we donate a bike to Toys for Tots for every home we sell. Nico, is that not a, a fun experience to be a part of around the holidays? It was so fun. We had to load down. It was 80 some bikes or 90 bikes into a truck and Toys for Tots people are excited and uh, it's just fun. And then just to, to know every time you're with a client, we can give them that. It's like another thing we do to help the community. Yeah, giving back to your community. And my, one of my favorite parts, Nico, was having Colin there helping us. So, you know, my grandson is was 11 years old at the time, and he was there to help. Like, he's experiencing giving back to the community. And he might not understand the, the, the fullness of that, but it was, a, it was cool. It was a cool experience to be able to do. And I encourage you all to, like, find something that you're passionate about in life. Maybe it's Maybe it's pets, maybe it's babies, maybe it's kids who have learning disabilities. Um, whatever you're passionate about, turn that into something that you can utilize in your business to give back, to add value to your community. Um, I want to share, so in, you know, in life, you, you go through life and you, you, have experiences so reading the Gus and Ruger story in the in this book and so in this book also is a um, in chapter two is a story it's on page 36 and I, I'm uh, this is this is really I, I feel honored Cody used the story of what we did becoming level four card senders. So since 2000, 2007, we joined send out cards. I started to send cards to keep in touch. You know, the market between 2008 and 2011 was pretty dismal. I don't, I don't care where you were, you know, that was the recession. And we made it intentional to, you know, be more human in our connections and started in sent cards. We send an average of six cards a day. So we went to a networking event 
and this networking event was the Taste of the Chamber, it was a uh, chamber event. There was 300 networkers in there, 20 chefs, and we were just one of the crowd. Well, it was because of my habit of taking pictures and sending cards that at the end of the day, when the, the Park Street Market was crowned champions, I just took a picture and I went home that night took their business card off the table and, and I addressed it to the Park Street Market. I didn't know anybody in the picture. I was just celebrating that they won the taste of the chamber. And a week later, I got a call from PR and, and he's like, hey, thanks for the card. That was awesome. Oh, by the way, my family and I are, are moving from the east side of the state and we're looking for a realtor. So why don't we meet and see if we'd be a good fit? And so we met for a beer downtown Kalamazoo and, you know, established a connection, a relationship. And, and that was in 2011. Kiar didn't close on his first home. We didn't do a sale with this. I, I feel like this is the Ruger story, you know. We developed that relationship and we were there to catch the sale when it was ready to happen. Kiar closed on his first home, 12-12-12. And then over the course of the next five years, we worked with nine friends and family members to close on nine homes, earned over $70,000 in commission on one card that we sent in celebration to someone we didn't know. So here's the cool part of the story that it keeps continuing. Because, you know, a week ago, I got a call from Kiara's mom. We sold them a house two years ago. She said, Gail, Someone knocked on my door, a realtor knocked on my door and said that they could get $260,000 for my house. And I told, and they let them in to walk around and see the home. But she says, I need to call my realtor. How many of you want to be the realtor that they call? It's like when someone goes knocking on their door and they go, oh, thanks for your opinion, but now I'm going to call my realtor. So I had scheduled an appointment with her because I was going out of town last week for Sunday. And um, I told her I'd message her to make sure that three o'clock was still good. And it was Sunday and I'm at the lake and I didn't really want, I didn't really want to come into town to be honest. And I thought, well, I called her. She didn't answer. I text her. She didn't message me back. I said, She's expecting me, I, I, and she wanted me to come at 3. I got there about 5. But here's what happened Sunday. I got, to, uh, I got to look through her house. She had all her brothers. Her brothers and sisters were now there from Detroit, and I got to meet more of the family. And then Zena, the, the youngest daughter, was there. I'd sold her and her husband a home. I got to hug the baby, right? Is this the powerful human connection part of things, right? Um, Nita was there. I'd sold Nita and her husband a home. Nita and I had a really heartfelt conversation that, that day on Sunday, what, three to, two days ago. I, they, okay, so Julie and Sam are the mom and dad. They had four chickens out in the backyard. I go, what do you, you know, like, Okay, then they kept joking, but the house can go, the chickens can go with the house, you know, it's like, I don't know if that many people really care to have chickens, to be honest, but um, they wanted to show me the chickens, so I went out in the back, on the back deck, and the four chickens were under the lounge chair, like hiding and like shading themselves, and there was two crows that were circling above, like big crows, like, and what did you think the chickens did? The chickens ducked underneath the um, deck and, I, and immediately thought of the Ruger and Gus story, right? It's like those, those crows were like, you know, like they were the ones that were making noise and going after the sale and the chickens were running away. And later <laughs> I watched, and this was probably two and a half hours later, I, I, I get there and I stay there. Um, Kiar ended up coming, his wife, they have three babies now. I went to their wedding back in 2013, where I met most of the family. I've watched as they had babies. They text me at midnight when they're having their babies with pictures. You know, this is the power of a human connection. 
So then later, after everybody had eaten, there was leftovers. So, so Sam takes the leftover watermelon and he goes out to feed the chickens. Here's the difference. Sam was Ruger. Sam had something and those chickens were used to having Sam deliver something good, a good experience, right? He wasn't the crows that were calling at him. He was the one with the watermelon feeding them, offering something. And so what did the chickens do when Sam walked to the chicken coop? They ran after him. And that's what I want you to think about when you're in sales and when you're making human connections so that you have people running after you, that you're not having to chase the sale. You get to have people come to you because of the value and the service and the energy that you give to people on a daily basis. Make sense? So, Jessica, you, you've got lots of smiles and head shakes. Share something with me today. Hang on. I'll unmute you. There. Oh, there we go. Perfect. I can't see that well, so I'm like, I know the unmute button is here somewhere. Uh, no, I, I, think that, um, I think that you speak my language. Um, I'm constantly just very, like, into the relationship and and helping people and very aloof. And then I have my husband who is like, what are you doing to get sales? And I'm like, well, I write a lot of cards. I do a lot of cards. And he's like, no, like, what do you do? Like, what do you do to get the sales? And I'm like, I get on Facebook, I go out and I talk to people, I meet people. And he's like, it's not happening fast enough. And I'm like, oh, this is my first year. What do you want from me? <laughs> um, so I just, I feel like I relate. Well, and, and there's power in that. There's power in, you know, Hank teaches us 50, 25, 1. And, you know, when you're, when you're consistent at doing that, things happen. Nico, I've watched you this year um, connect with people. You've, you've used some of Monica's um, strategies in the realtors posting thing, and you've gotten traction. So, Speak to us because as a new agent in your first year, where do you, like you were asking, you, we chatted yesterday and you needed a, a name for a, um, a surveyor. So you're having conversations. How do you enter into those conversations? Well, that's a lot of questions. I guess, uh, you know, really to me, sticking with the 50-25 one, that's been where a lot of the conversations come from, especially in those, those 20 kind of start a conversation and then Normally, I go in like a private message if I want to talk more with people and things like that. Um, you know, I think kind of what you guys are saying, like being a new agent, like I don't, I don't want to go out and buy leads. I don't want to be the guy that's like knocking on everybody's door. Um, a friend of yours, Daryl, called me the other day. And he's a new agent. He's like, hey, what have you been doing? And he's like, you know, are you, are you talking to for sale by owners and are you calling expireds? And I said, Honestly, man, I was like, that's the farthest from what I want to do. I was like, I don't know how to do that. I mean, obviously I could just call people. I was like, but I'm kind of in the mode of, hey, you know what? I'm just going to keep connecting with people. And when they need they need something, they'll hopefully think of me as, as the number one uh, option. Um, you know, I think I've shared with some of the people in my group. You know, I, I try to send cards as much as possible. I wish I was at six a day. I don't think I'm that good. But... I will tell you every time I send a card, um, I feel like a it's normally for something somebody's doing on Facebook. It's never been like I've never sent a card and said, "Hey, it's Nico. I became a realtor. Like, who do you know buying a house?" I've never been that way. And the referrals I've gotten off send out cards is normally someone just saying, "Hey, thanks for the card about my kid, but hey, man, I hear you're doing real estate. You know, I'd like to talk to you about my wife and I are thinking about this." Or hey. Um, you know, I, I, if, if you find a house that looks like this, let me know. Cause we might be interested, you know? So it's always just been send the cards and connect with people and then, Hey, when they need something, they'll reach out. You know, I've kind of been in a little bit of a lull of slowness right now. Um, but I'm not like losing faith. I'm just, I even had to kind of check myself. I think it was two weeks ago we met with Monica and she was just like, Hey, stay the course, you know, stay consistent. And I really started double downing on sending cards again because I kind of, got a little maybe lazy in it um, with just traveling and stuff like that. So just keep doing it. And uh, obviously 
I, I've seen my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law do it for so many years that I look at them and when they get like five referrals a week, I'm just like, ah, I don't know what that <laughs> but I know that they've been doing it for 14 years and I know how much she sends cards. So I know it works. I just got to stay uh, consistent and faithful at work. You're, you're amazing and you're doing awesome. And yeah, Steve's like, I can't even keep up with the referrals Steve's getting now. You know, like, um, hey, I want to look at this property out on Lake Doster, and if it's something that's for us, we want to sell our house in town. And you know, you're looking at here's my here's what I did. I set an intention in my mind, and it's going to be one of my affirmation statements going forward. I am working with 20 people who are buyer sellers. How many of you think that working with 20 people who buy sell that's 40 deals a year that you could make a good good um, income working with 20 people? I mean, yes, you're offering that service, but I, I'm going to go through my um, my production this year, and I'm going to look at that, and, and I'm going to look and see how many I basically double dips, right? Because we're we're working with the seller and the buyer, and you know, I think right now we're probably somewhere around like five of those. So there's ten of our thirty two transactions are buyer sellers and that's that that can really be lucrative and if you look at your your contacts and see I'm, I'm gonna share a story again if you don't mind this was posted and and this leads up to something that came today so and it goes in with our 20, 50 25 one and people always ask me how do you get addresses do, do, does anybody have a hard time with that or they wonder like how do i get addresses so this was posted by uh, you know and i am big on acting on promptings okay so when i see something on social media that stirs an emotional response in me i pause i know there's a reason for it um point in in fact is can you see can you see the screen with the guy at the sunglasses just checking yeah. okay so Diane Obby posted this July 30th summer in Michigan missing the South Haven Pier one of my favorite picks Paul took it Jerry with Pat and me in the and the sailboat so see the reflection in the glasses and I loved this but here's here's also what I did I sent Diane a message you guys are in my way let me move us up here I said good morning Diane see no other conversations ever good morning Diane my heart was touched by your picture of Jerry hey <laughs> I should have said he played a, he, he <laughs> Sue said he prayed for me for several times at Kalamazoo first I'd like to send it to you in a card would you mind sharing your home address so she shared it with me so then I went to, and let me see if it's in this. Uh, so I then went to my account, and this is the card I sent. Simple, just the front of the card on the inside. I said, when I saw this picture on Facebook, it brought back memories of Jerry praying for me at church. He was a special man. You have a special family. And I wanted to send this card for you as a little keepsake in memory, in a memory you hold dear. Love, Gail. And then, um, you know, the back was just a picture. It had nothing really to do with real estate. See, we used the branding that was just Steve and I. But here's, so here's what happened today. I went out to my mailbox and I got a note from Diane Abbey. And it said, Dear Gail and Steve, thank you so very much for the card with our picture on it. It touched my heart more than you'll ever know. And to do it in memory of Jerry was precious to me. Your kind words and thoughts overwhelm me. I will be praying for your family and business. So glad you're on Facebook. I'm going to frame it and put it where I can see it all the time. And I will think of you. Love, Diane Abbey. 
Like I like when I read this out of my mailbox today, I started to cry because when we pause to celebrate other people, we don't know what what we're like. I didn't send her the card to get real estate business. I didn't send her a card to sign her up and send out cards. I sent her a card because when I saw the picture of Jerry, it brought back memories of me as a vulnerable woman having someone pray for me at church. And, you know, when you give your heart, this is what Cody talks about in his book, the balance between system and heart. Send out cards is a system that we can all use to get more business, stay top of mind, um, have a, a great marketing, you know, set it, you know, you know, set it and send it. But when you take the opportunity to celebrate people at a, at a human emotional level and you receive things like this back in the mail, this is what tells me that, you know, send out cards is, is doing what Cody wants to do. It's the power of the human connection and it's, it's bringing the human race together in a powerful way through kindness and through top of mind awareness. If you can, in you, like, and this is like I like like Nico said, I send an average of six, you know, three to six cards a day. Three is my minimum. I want to send at least three heartfelt cards every single day. And if you're doing your 50, 25, one, and you're getting those conversations through a thread or you see pictures, pause in your day and create moments for people. And when you're doing that three, at least three times a day, think about that. Three people every single day are experiencing your energy, your power, your love, your kindness, your appreciation, your gratitude. And when you have that going on, it's, you know, Cody has always taught what you send out comes back. So if you're sending out positive, happy, gratitude, appreciation, it's going to come back to you. So um, I just want to encourage you, and I hope that illustrates a little bit about what can happen as you're consistent in your efforts um, every single day. So um, that's what I wanted to share with you today. And I'm happy to like stay on and have a conversation, answer questions, um, share your heart. Can you share more about what you put on the back of the card? I think I saw two different pictures. Maybe one was a bike and yourself and then and your husband, and then it was a different picture. Do you mix those up or always the same? Or? I do. I mix them up um, in the system. So let's just, if I'm going to send a card, um, just, I'll just do the build your own. I'm just going to go through this real quick. Grab a photo. So I've, I've created the inside when I, um, uh, and this is, this is okay. So this looks scrunchy. It, it doesn't print like that. So when, when you send a, um, horizontal card, and your your back is vertical it's going to print just fine on the back of the card so here's the different layouts i can choose from ones that i see all the ones i've created over here this is my default one and i'm going to i'm going to go back cuz i want to get a i want to get to where you can see better i'm just going to take this okay so now I'm on the back of the card. This is a little bit easier to see. I go to the layouts and I, this is the one I just created this, um, for the cards I'm sending out to people who purchased homes recently. Life is a beautiful ride is a picture that hangs in our office. There's a picture of Steve and I at the Eiffel tower when we were just visiting France. And by the way, when we were in France in Paris, we closed four homes while we were there. Um, and, 
that's because of the relationships that you create with people, the trust and the value that they know that you're going to take care of them, even though you're like a continent away, um, enjoying a family wedding vacation. And so um, I'm using that in my branding now. And again, when people know, if they know who you are, they know where to find you, um, they like you and they trust you, you're not going to worry about where your business comes from because that trust value is going to be exponential. Um, I have this one. This just shows both Steve and I by our for sale sign. This one I use during the summer because everybody knows that we have a lake house. Here's pictures of us out on the lake. Hope you are enjoying your day. Stephen Gill Zintac, broker, owner, realtors, network team, homes, realty. And then we have Steve's number and our website on there. So this is the back of the cards that we usually send, um, like just because, you know, if I'm sending out cards that um, are just because. If I want to, if I'm here at the back of a card and I want to create a new one, I just click this down here where it says create new. It gives me all the templates and I'm able to go in and create whatever I want. So. Um, Let's say I uh, just want to have a blank picture on the back, or like a full picture on the back. It has nothing to do with, with real estate. Maybe it's, it's um, a picture of our sunset. I can just plop that right on the back of the card and you know move it around, and that could be the branding on the back of the card. Any other questions about the branding? I love the back of the card branding. I didn't think about using it until this call as like an opportunity to brand. I usually use it as an opportunity to put another photo of um, like uh, their kid eating, a, doing a birthday cake smash for their birthday. Well, and Jessica, that, you know, that's the beauty of, of being personal and relational, you know, as you start to send more cards and I'll just kind of, I'll go back and I'll show you, you know, we can go back to the last, um, if I go to my card history, you can see these are anniversary cards that are waiting to go out. Um, 12, 14, David and, and Christine, this will go out to them, Travis. So these are our clients. Um, Hey, I got a, I didn't get a listing. I got a referral and um, my husband, Steve and I went out last week. We presented, we sent the CMA. I got the email that said, sorry. I mean, thank you for coming and meeting with us and sorry, we chose someone else. So what did I do? I sent him a thank you card and in the card, it just says, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you to discuss the value of your home. Even though you chose to work with someone else, we want you to know that we wish you all the best. We wish all the best for you as you move to your 1908 masterpiece in Grand Rapids. Cause that they bought already bought a home. Life is short. Make the best of every day. Stephen Gale's in tech on the back of it is that branding that I showed you. And um, so you know what that thank you note's going to go out. I want to leave people feeling a positive, even though we don't get the business, that it's something that they feel positive about us with. So, um, Carrie Rouse, the, this was posted on Facebook. I found apps. You guys, there's a, a cool app. So this is, this app is called, um, photo pip, P I P photo pip. And so they posted this family picture on Facebook. And this is just one of the, you know, one of the things. <laughs> and they were celebrating Carrie's mom and dad's 60th birthday. I babysat all three of those boys that are grown men now when they were babies. That was my first life. And so I just said, we love the Rouse family. Congratulations to your mom and dad, Carrie, on 60 years of marriage. Love Stephen Gale. And there's the boating branding on the back. Um, this gal came out to sell us advertising. She's in our BNI group. She didn't know, but she's like, she's interested in using send out cards. So I showed her how it worked again with that photo app and, and just um, thanked her for coming out and look forward to working with her. And I sent her the two pack of brownies. 
Um, this is a, we closed on a home. This is a home we closed on. It was a referral from a lender. And we had uh, Tim and Cindy out to our lake. So I just added pictures. This is a three panel card. Here's the inside. Congratulations on the purchase of your beautiful new home. We are so thrilled you found the perfect place to make your own. Can't wait to see what the gardens look like with your care, Cindy. Cindy's like a master gardener. We enjoyed having you out to the lake. You're amazing fun couple and we wish only the best for you thank you for your trust and then i added pictures see get level four with taking pictures too use this smartphone take pictures everywhere you go because you can use them these are some pictures i took of them out at the lake and then this is the flap so on a three panel card you guys you get a lot of real estate um, you actually get six panels. I don't have one close at hand to show you. But then on the back, again, this is the branding. We will be no donating a brand new bike to Toys for Tots in your honor. So, and um, the gifting. Now, I probably would not go out and spend $90 on this type, type of a gift. But you know what, you guys? I don't have time to go out and shop. And my my time is valuable, so I chose this. Um, I was, let me get it. let me get it for you. So anyway, there's there's some more, and then you can see I did lots of save the dates, and those are in there too. Um, let's go and look at the gifts for a minute. So there's there's tons of gifts in here. I chose this gift set because I'm, I mean these. These giraffes are killer for babies. If you have clients that are having babies, 15 bucks, and it's the cutest little pink or blue giraffe, and you can like add it to your card, click send, and it's done. And they'll appreciate it. So here's, um, hmm, maybe. <laughs> Let me see if I scroll down, I can see it. I, I don't see where it is right now. Oh, here, for the home. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the, the little um, cutting board. I, and and to, to set that up, I know that she likes to be in the kitchen and they love to entertain. So this was a perfect gift for me to send because um, it's pewter. It's it's nice. It's very um, it's stainless steel and aluminum. It says um, love generously, live simply. So very thankful. So every time she gets this cutting board out and these cheese knives, she's gonna remember Steve and I. I hope <laughs> along with the picture. But but so that's. You know, being able to utilize send out cards as a greeting card and gifting service to build your relationships is killer. Hey, Gail. Yes. One of the gifts that I use a lot, which is unfortunate I have to use, is when people lose a pet. You know, obviously, I think everybody likes dogs, animals, or whatever, but that's been the one where kind of maybe I don't have a great relationship with the person, but maybe I just, I just know them. We're friends on Facebook. And I'm trying to find a way to connect with them a little bit more. When somebody has a dog or a cat that passes, there's a little pin you can send them. And man, the response you get from those folks that, you know, obviously if you've lost a pet like we did a year ago, you make that real personal telling them how, you know, how, how it impacted our lives losing a pet. My son lost his dog. And I give him this little, yeah, it's the dog lover one. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, the people, their, their response from, you know, obviously, you know, getting something that is a picture of their dog or cat that passed away and then just telling them that you're thinking of them. Um, it's been, it's been a huge response. Not that I love to, that to be the reason to send them, but it's just another way that you can use some of the gifts that can really impact people. Now they have this little pin to kind of look at. They'll always remember their fur baby. Mm -hmm. I think most people in our group are all dog cat lovers of some sort. Right. Yeah, it is powerful because it is a is a token of appreciation. And you know, here's good dog. You know, if someone posts something about their dog going to obedience school, you know, here's one that's good dog 
blessing ring, you know, nice kitty. <laughs> you know, they're, they're getting more and more of these. I love the card. Um, let me see if I can find right here. These go in, they're card size gifts. They go in. So, you know, the little sachets or kindness is contagious, pass it on. I had someone send that to me. And it's, what's cool about it is it, it, like you, now you pass it on. So I got the kindness ring and I was shopping one day and I had a really nice salesperson. And I, I said, I, I want to give something to you. This was given to me and it's a kindness coin. And I want you to, I just wanted to let you know that you blessed me today. And so I want to give this to you. And, and like the look on her face was so cool. And so I'm hoping that she will pass it on and, and share a little story and it becomes something fun for them but you know thinking of you you a musician send them a little guitar tell them to rock on you know success keys um wish friends blessing ring graduation laughter hope celebrate someone cares about you you know these are just little tokens for less than five dollars that you can add to a card that lets somebody know that you're thinking of them in a very tangible, special way. Do you know if there's, um, just because I'm curious, I'm playing, I very rarely go on the website. I'm always on my phone. Is he, are they still adding more and more to the app for gifts? Because I just saw like 20 gifts I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I sometimes I try to send them from my, and I'm Android, so. The caveat there is Android's usually behind in their app development and updates. Um, so sometimes if I'm on my Android trying to send a gift, it'll say it's, it's you know, out of service or it's not working. So as soon as I go to my computer, I can add a gift. And so I think that's just the, the app's just not working at full capacity. Okay. But, um, yeah, just I, I'd encourage you to go online sometimes on your computer and just go to the gifts and see because, like, they're, they're adding things all the time, Nico, that I don't necessarily see. I've never clicked on that link. On the gifts? I've never clicked <laughs> on that. <laughs> Uh-oh, I've created a monster. I just know it. <laughs> No, that's, that's really cool. I really like that a lot. Yeah. And, and so for those of you who aren't on the service, I'm just going to take a second to show you and explain how I use it in, um, cause there's, uh, you know, there was the before the send out cards before April and after. So, um, for me, the different pricing, let's see subscriptions. I'll just click here. So everybody can have a free account. So as a referral partner, I'm a referral partner. I can sign up people all day long to, to just send cards whenever they need to. Nobody has to have options. If you want to have the relationship manager that send out cards has, the $17 a month um, gives you a better pricing on cards and it'll allow you to store your contact in a least expensive um, relationship manager. The premium is unlimited single send cards. So I just showed you several um, ideas of the single send cards. The one to Diane Abbey, the one to my the Rouse family. Um, like Nico suggested, the the tokens that you can send with a card. You can send unlimited single send cards including postage for $97 a month. So that's why I say send at least three a day. If you send 90 cards a month, that's, that's 1,095 cards a year. If you touch 1,000, uh, let's just round up. If you touch 1,100 people in a year, do you think it's going to increase your ability to connect and sell homes? 100%. I'm going to tell you absolutely. We're on the enterprise because, you know, that save the date card, I get a hundred group sends a month for just the cost of postage. It used to cost me to send, let's just say a hundred cards like that. It used to cost me $165 to send a hundred cards. Now it costs me 50. So the, the savings that you get on the different 
depending on how you're going to use send out cards is um, phenomenal. And I'm always open to have a conversation with you about that. If you want to delve into that a little bit more outside of this, but um, these packages are what will set you apart and allow you because think about this. Um, if, if you sent a card a day, that's still 30 cards a month. But if, if you could budget a hundred dollars a month to reach as many people as you can. And when Hank teaches us the 50, 25, one, if you're sending three to five cards a day, I will guarantee you that you're going to have better connections, more top of mind awareness and more opportunities for, for actual conversations. I always say a card is a conversation. You know, in my business, it's commitment, it's conversations, it's cards and consistency. And if you're consistently doing things that are going to bring about um, opportunities for you to have more conversations, you're going to do better business. So I hope what I've shared with you today has been helpful. Um, I'm thankful that somebody showed up today because Monica says, oh, I'm gone. I don't know who's going to show up today, but you know, I have recorded this and I will post it in, in her group and she'll be able to see all of you who showed up today and she'll be applauding you and thankful that you're committed to making a difference in your business. So it's a pleasure. Oh, someone chatted. So I don't know. Let me just see. Oh, thank you, Kip. It was, um, I'm glad you found it helpful and it's, it's so cool to connect with you. And I just say, go out, make it a great day. Send at least three to five cards every single day and it'll make a difference in your life and it'll make a difference in your business. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Thank Kip. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.